uh, plucking a flower with a gentle melancholy, wishing that it would reveal to her the nature of a love beyond her time. When I was six, I learned that little girls play these games. And there's a 50-50 chance that you'll find yourself in love. He loves me. He loves me now. The Daisy Oracle is traditionally intended for young girls to predict their futures with more of dead dreams. But the love lottery extends beyond the bounds of a girl's romances with her suitors, or of a hard finesse design. By most counts, I look like a woman. I've got childbearing hips and full chest. I spent copious amounts of money on bras. I bleed so profusely once a month that I wish I was somewhere else. And I obey wildly by the tweets when other people wish they were somewhere else. I have grown into every current of this body as it's prescribed. I play the game of the pretty womanhood that all the girls perform. It's like a hero's origin story. When does the girl become a woman? Womanhood I knew was characterized by a coming of age plucking flowers in a meadow, waiting to have each curve of an hourglass, each slope of a cheek bone, each dash of sensuality tucked into the edges of a collarbone. Girls wait for their first puberty because that is when you're a woman, when blood drips between your knees and you and a set of curved bones with a warm and waking womb. Girls wait for their first period. They count the days, the minutes. They eye Victoria's secret like the promise of future fulfillment. But when does the girl become a woman? In sixth grade locker room. I was 11 years old. In sixth grade, it was my first year in the locker room. And I tell myself now that middle school is when I became a woman. I had my period in sixth grade, and I was already spilling past the brims of A cups and training bras into the full chest and half for hand Sixth grade. 11 years old, my first year in a locker room. The memory goes like this. My training bra slipped down past my grown chest, exposing half of me to the girls around me. And I remember it well because it never would have happened to see the other girls around me. The other girls around me were tall, lean, thin, flat chested, and I was already growing into curves and cutouts, wide hips and thick thighs, breasts too big for my five foot. I remember the other girls commenting on their own flat chests and asking me where I got mine. And that was the first time in being a woman that I felt like I was alone, that I felt like she loved me not. See, my vision of womanhood was limited to the copy of the care and keeping of you that I kept under my bookshelf. Uh, in sixth grade, people aren't really turning into women, women because I was what they called an early bloomer. So by the time I was given a definition of womanhood, I was expected to already have embraced mine. I was expected or you know what it meant. I was expected to already be a woman because the doctor said that I had the maturity and body that made a woman. So when I was learning womanhood, I had to teach myself. I guessed at my own bra sizes all throughout middle school uh, because I was too embarrassed to go get a fitting. <laughs> and uh, it turns out in high school, I wore a bra that was two cup sizes and too small for me. I practiced the angle that a tampon is supposed to slide into your body and then cried the first time I had to put one in until my mom switched me from outside the door. My experiences with womanhood were never the greatest, from the teasing to the insecurities to uh, the pair of underwear I ruined, um, with blood stains. But my experiences with womanhood were special because I got to make them my own. I made my newfound womanhood into a fortress, and I steeled myself from the little girls who were trying to get in because I didn't think they could ever relate to me. In my middle school mind, their teasing was an embodiment of the jealousy they felt at my newfound maturity and womanhood that they still had to wait for. So I isolated myself from them. And it was lonely, but it felt right because that was the womanhood I wanted. And as sad as it was, I was very proud of them because I was proud of my womanhood and it felt like she loved me. I was proud of my womanhood until I found out that I wasn't supposed to be. I was 16. I was in a doctor's office at the hospital. I drank two glasses of water so that my stomach was bloated, just like they asked me to. It wasn't enough water, so I sat in the waiting room drinking water for another 20 minutes until they decided there was enough meat to stop out. They pulled me into the office, sat me down, smeared goo on my stomach, and poked me with a stick for 15 minutes. I was getting an ultrasound, but not because anybody thought I was pregnant, because they were testing if I was sick. They were testing if my early blooming was a symptom of an illness. They were testing if my womanhood was not the blessing that I thought it was. And sure enough, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is characterized by the physical imbalance of male and female reproductive hormones, so progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. For the one in 10 women affected, it's a complete toss-up of what that means. Acne, uh, heavy periods, excess body hair, infertility, 
You never really know what you're going to get. And the symptoms of PCOS are easily disguised among a group of girls who are all growing up. It's easily misdiagnosed as a girl being melodramatic, or it's just normal, or you're in for a late bloomer. The other girls in middle school would never want to feel high thoughts in the The other girls in middle school would never want to be told that they seem like a man. The other girls in middle school would never want to question if they could have kids. The other girls in middle school would never want to bleed through full pads in a day. I felt like my womanhood was a curse and not womanhood. And it felt like you loved me not. <laughs> the benchmarks of womanhood are as follows. One, you sweat and you grow body hair. Two, you grow breasts. Three, you get your period. Four, congratulations, you are a woman. They're all physical. In sixth grade, I was a woman because I checked all the boxes that I knew I was supposed to check. Because my doctor said that I had the body and the physicality to become a woman. But those changes didn't mean anything to me. I knew that my body was changing, but I was in sixth grade. I didn't know to assign the prescribed meanings to them. I didn't know what the prescribed meanings were. So I had to make my own. I didn't embrace a romance hero's kind of spirit. I didn't embrace a magazine model sexuality. I didn't embrace the loving care of a gentle, soon-to-be mother. I steeled myself away. I isolated myself from the other girls because I thought that womanhood was a prize to be won. But what I didn't understand is that there's a failure in the system of womanhood. There's a metaphor about blooming, about being an early bloomer. Because whenever something blooms, a flower springs up. The failure of the blooming metaphor comes into play when you look at the end of the flower cycle, when a young woman becomes disillusioned with her own womanhood because the meaning that she carved for it was not the meaning that she was supposed to find. For me, my era of impurity started at 16, when all the normal girls became women, and I could see the joy bursting from the seams of their body. But I no longer felt the euphoria that came with being a girl anything. By the time I was 16, I wasn't a bloomer anymore. I was wilting. And it's sad because at that point, I was tired of being a woman. I felt like my womanhood was a burden. I bleed too much and I cry too much. And those things aren't just because of my PCOS. They're because of the fact that I was taught that womanhood is one thing. Womanhood is when your womb opens at 14. Womanhood is when your breasts grow past the curves of your clothes. Womanhood is when your heart beats in sync with every other woman's in the world, filling the perfect template carved by the girl sitting in the meadow pocket. Womanhood is one thing. See, we train ourselves to intertwine womanhood and physicality, body and womanhood. And in theory, that's a good thing. But in practice, it's not. When we train ourselves to intertwine womanhood and body, we forget to allow space for the girls who, in a process entirely out of their control, became women earlier or later than they were supposed to. When that happens, it's like losing the genetic part. I had the right curves to be a woman, but I had the wrong hormones to be one. I lost the genetic lottery. When I lost the genetic lottery, it felt like the end of the world. I lost the genetic lottery. For every meaning that I make for my own womanhood, it's wrong because society says that that's not the meaning I was supposed to make. For every reason I have to love my own womanhood, Tradition will ask me where I found it because it's not in her syllabus. And that's why it's so dangerous to intertwine womanhood and physicality because society teaches young girls the standards for beauty and the standards for being a woman, the physical traits that they have. And it passes those along, but those physical traits in the world's womanhood have no room for error, no room to love your body beyond the norm, no room to be an early bloomer. When I say that I became a woman in sixth grade, I mean that in sixth grade, I sat on the floor of the locker room, plucking a flower instead of an arrow. And when my bra slipped down, exposing half of my chest, I knew that the time had come for me to start plucking away the petals of my own flower. When I say that I became a woman in sixth grade, I mean that I met the requirements, but I felt like a part of me became locked in that locker room, and I would never get it back. When I say that I became a woman in sixth grade, I mean that womanhood is inextricably tied to physicality, and as a result, some women will never feel like they are a woman. She loves me. She loves me.
love me. There are things I love about my womanhood because they were the things that I was supposed to love. But there are things that I hate about my womanhood because they will never be the way that they were supposed to be. Thank you.